Okay, this is a good place to start for the next case, which is called pseudomembranous colitis. Down here at the bottom, you see your classical normal colon. Please notice two things. Notice that the mucosal glands are nice and blue because they are distinct and they are well differentiated from the general pinker connective tissue. Also notice that the submucosa is nice and loose. And to prove that to you, we're going to go up and show it to you. Here are the nice, well, distinct mucosal glands. Here's the muscularis mucosa. Notice that the entire submucosa now is nice and loose and vascular and has a little fat, loose connective tissue, just like it should be before you actually get into the um, muscle wall layer. Now here is the uh, disease in question. It's called pseudomembranous colitis. The two things that you absolutely want to notice about this relative to normal colon histology is, number one, the mucosal glands are not very distinct and they are not very blue and they are generally replaced in the superficial portions by a very intricate admixture of fibrin and inflammatory cells. This is indeed the so-called pseudomembrane. Notice there's a few remnants of halfway normal glands out here, but the superficial glands are necrotic and inflamed and admixed with this scab or membrane of fibrin and neutrophils. Notice also that the submucosa is not normally loose and fat. It's also inflamed. It has a lot of increase in vessels and it also has uh, a lot of inflammatory cells. And just so you could see what the nature is of the inflammatory cells in the pseudomembrane is, let's zoom in on it even more. And I think you might see some bare remnants of uh, mucosal glands here, but you could see the superficial mucosa is nothing but a scab. This is indeed the pseudomembrane. Theoretically, any superficial scab on a colon for any reason could result in this appearance of pseudomembranous colitis. In reality, however, 90% of the time, this is caused by an overgrowth of a uh, bacterial toxin from the bacterium Clostridium difficile. So, for the most part, pseudomembranous colitis is uh, generally regarded as being caused most of the time by Clostridium difficile toxin. And thank you very much.